Good afternoon, my re news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, it shot three fatally in gun attack in St. Andrew. The police are probing another mass shooting incident in the country. This after gunmen shot eight persons on Boeing's Road in St. Andrew on Saturday night. Two persons have been confirmed to have died, with subsequent reports pointing to a third individual as having since succumbed to injuries. Two of the deceased have been identified as 35-year-old Kemar Hardware, a bar operator of Kingston 13, and a 19-year-old man, so far only identified by his aliases, Stephen and Brown Man. Reports are that about 11.40 p.m., the now deceased persons were among a group of people standing along the roadway when armed men approached on foot and opened a gunfire before fleeing the scene. The police were alerted and the eight wounded persons were taken to hospital where hardware and the teenager were pronounced dead. The police are theorizing that the incident may have stemmed from an ongoing gang feud in the St. Andrew South Police Division. Investigations are ongoing into the development. The incident follows last month's mass shooting on Heroes Day, in which five men were killed and two others injured during a football match in Pleasant Heights, formerly Warica Hills in Rockford, East Kingston. Prior to that, there were notable mass shootings in Point Hill, St. Catherine, and on Cherry Tree Lane in Four Parts, Clarendon. Man gone down in Spanish Town. The Spanish Town Police in St. Catherine are yet to establish a motive for the killing of a man along Young Street early Saturday morning. Dead is 39 year old Jason Gardner of Fairfield, Lincoln, Manchester. Reports are that about 4 40 a.m., explosions were heard along the roadway. Gardner was later found suffering from gunshot wounds. The police were summoned and the scene examined. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch is probing the incident. Police probe accidental shooting by gun owner. The Kingston Eastern Police are investigating an incident where a licensed firearm holder reportedly accidentally shot himself. It is reported that around 1 p.m. on Saturday, the 55-year-old gun owner was seated in his vehicle when his firearm went off, hitting him in the leg. The incident reportedly occurred in the vicinity of a school. The injured man then reportedly drove himself to the University Hospital of the West Indies for treatment. The matter was reported to the police. The weapon was seized and an investigation launched. Police constable succumbs to injuries from St. Anne crash. A police constable has succumbed to injuries he sustained in a motor vehicle crash in Discovery Bay, St. Anne. Dead is Constable Ramon Sterling, who was attached to the Montego Hills Police Station in St. James. It is not clear what caused the crash, but reports reaching the news are that the vehicle that Sterling was driving overturned and he had to be removed from the wreckage by firefighters who arrived on the scene. Sterling was rushed to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where he died whilst undergoing treatment. St. James, a former implicated in murder investigation. A St. James, a former has been named as a suspect in the 2022 shooting death of a man in his community. He is 26 year old Terry Atkinson of Sand Lane, Germantown, in the parish. Atkinson is charged with murder, shooting with intent, and illegal possession of firearm. The deceased has been identified as 26-year-old Gary Morgan of the same community. Reports are that on Sunday, September 4, 2022, about 1.45 p.m., a witness was at a cook shop when Atkinson was observed along with eight other men, all armed with handguns, on the premises of Morgan. It is reported that the men opened a gunfire at the witness, which caused the individual to flee for safety, and while fleeing, loud explosions were heard coming from the direction of Morgan's premises. When the shooting subsided, Morgan was found suffering from gunshot wounds and was assisted to the hospital, where he later succumbed. 
on Wednesday, October 30, 2024, a statement was recorded from the witness implicating Atkinson. The police said Atkinson was apprehended and is subsequently charged after an interview in the presence of his attorney on Friday, November 1, 2024. His court date is being finalized. Man arrested, firearms seized in Olympic Gardens. The police seized a firearm and the 60 rounds of ammunition during a targeted operation on Balcom Drive, Olympic Gardens, St. Andrew on Saturday. One man was arrested in connection with the seizure. He has been identified as 26-year-old DeAndre Williams, otherwise called a Kadim, a barber of the community. Williams is charged with the possession of a prohibited weapon and the possession of unauthorized ammunition. Reports are that about 12.30 p.m., a team of officers conducted a raid in the area when the firearm and ammunition were seized. Williams is a court date is being finalized. MOCA boasts the cyber forensic capabilities to combat the digital criminals. The major organized and anti-corruption agency is intensifying its efforts to tackle cybercrime, acknowledging the evolving sophistication of modern-day criminals. MOCA's Director General, Colonel Desmond Edwards, underscored the agency's focus on building cyber forensic capabilities at a public lecture on cybersecurity and cybercrime at the Mona School of Business and Management in St. Andrew on Wednesday. It was held under the theme Tackling Cybercrime through Strategic Partnership and was staged in collaboration with the MOCA and the MSBM. Organized crime, fraud and corruption now bear the fingerprints of digital methodologies, declared Edwards in his address. Cyber criminals today are not just tech-savvy individuals operating in isolation. They are organized networks that are adaptive and are constantly involved in identity theft, intellectual property violations, trafficking, and these have all moved into cyber realm, he argued. To combat this, Edwards has said MOCA is enhancing its cyber investigative expertise. Our response must now match the sophistication of the digital criminals. This is why MOCA has put a focus on building cyber forensic and the cyber investigative expertise in aligning our strategies to meet these unique demands, he informed. Parts of the response also includes strengthening partnerships with the private and the public sectors. But expertise alone is not enough. Partnership is key to meet the scale of this threat. Collaboration between government, law enforcement, and the private sector is critical, Edwards pointed out. Together we are stronger, not just only to understand the threats before us now, but to anticipate those on the horizon to be proactive rather than reactive, he added. He further highlighted the far-reaching impact of cyber threats on communities, the economy, and the national sovereignty. We must use every resource at our disposal to defend against that threat, Edwards indicated. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.